Hallelujah. I want our uh, ladies to come if they would. And uh, we're just going to pray and worship the Lord. Uh, anybody ready? Y'all yeah, are quiet this morning. I don't know what's going on. Y'all scare me when you get quiet. I got woke up too early this morning. Amen. I'm here. 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 i am here i am Jesus and all that he does for us for keeping us safe throughout all of our journeys through the world and, and you know let's just uh, lift his name up.
folks come. The kids have something for us today, and uh, we're just going to let Sister Amber come and hear what she, what she has planned for us today. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Glad to have uh, Brother Dick and Brother Ricky here. Amen. We love these folks. They good folks. Been missing Brother Dick. He's a, he's a part here for quite a while. Amen. We, we love him. Amen. Amen. Glad we love you too, Ricky. Don't, don't blame me. No. We just don't know you as well as we know Brother Dick. Mm -hmm. And Riley, you can't help but love that person. I'll tell you, man. She's just a sweetheart. So, so we're glad to have everybody here this morning. Sister Andrew, do you want this microphone? Okay. What about the kids? Do they need a boy and his dad by Edgar A. Guest. A boy and his dad on a fishing trip. There is a glorious fellowship. Father and son in the open sky and the white clouds lazily drifting by and the laughing stream as it runs along with the clicking reel like a marital song. And the father teaching the youngster gay how to land a fish in a sportsman's way. I fancy I hear them talking there in an open boat and speech is fair. And the boy is learning the ways of men from the finest man in his youthful kin, kings. To youngster cannot compare with the gentle father who is with them there, hid him there. In the greatest mind of the human race, not for one minute could take his place. Which is happier, man or boy? The soul of the father is steeped in joy. For he's finding out to his heart's delight that his son is fit for the future fight. He is learning the glorious depths of him and the thoughts he thinks in his every whim. And he shall discover when night comes on how close he has grown to his little son. Oh, I envy them as I see them there under the sky in the open air. For out of, out of the old, old long ago come the summer days that I used to know. When I learned life's truth from my father's lips, as I shared the joy of his fishing trips. Boy and his dad on a fishing trip, builders of life's companionship. Dad by Leanne, I can't say her name. <laughs> D is for the days we spent together. A is for the awesome things you do. D is for your decency and kindness. Dad, I am so glad that I have you. Yeah, there is. Get up here. 
want to do. Amen. Lord, we love you. Thank you Lord. We Thank praise you. you this morning. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise and everything that we do. Lord, let me be what you would have me to be today, Lord. Let me be a conduit unto you. Speak through me, Lord. Let me step aside. Let my words be of no avail. But your words come forth today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. May be seated in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Why did you start out with verse 4? Because that's the most important thing ever. Right. Hear, O Israel, hear my church. That's right. Amen. The Lord our God is one Lord. He's not Amen. two. He's not three. That's right. He's not divided. He's one. That's right. That's right. One Lord. Amen. And then the Bible starts to tell us, the law of the Lord starts to tell men, this is how you are to conduct your household. First thing. We're not going to get into everything else. We're just going to show you right off the bat. This is where you just bring it right on down and shuck the corn right down to the cob, right? Here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. When you love the Lord with all your heart, in front of your children and in front of your wife, and in front of your nieces and nephews, and in front of your grandkids, whatever it may be, when you love the Lord thy God with all your heart, it will show. They will see it. Man, I... You are teaching them by example. That's right. This is what I love. This is what I believe. This is where my heart and my alliance lies That's to right. my heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And with all thy soul and with all thy might, everything in me. Amen. Desires him. Everything in me wants to carry on that knowledge and that wisdom of God to the next generation, to those around me. Why? Because that's the kind of father I want to be. <coughs> and these words which I command thee this day will be in thine heart. It's not just flushing through your system. It's not something that you just take in and let it go. Yes. This is something that should be written in your heart. This is something that should be carried from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, it says, train up a child in the way that they should go, and when they're old, they'll not depart from it. Amen. Some of us may have older children. And we may think, you know, I've done, I tried to do everything. I had the Lord in my heart. I had, you know, a desire for the things of God. Right. But yet my child is not in church. Let me tell you again what the Bible says. Train up a child in the way that they should go. But I did that. Okay, then receive the rest of the promise. And they will not depart from it when they're old. Amen. 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 But they're not living for the Lord. They ain't dead yet. <laughs> There's still life in them. There's still hope. But my child's out. That make me a bad daddy. No. Not as long as you've been teaching the Lord and as long as you did what you had to do. Praise God. Those of us with young kids, babies, Eight year old, nine, ten, whatever. We still got to be teaching these kids when. Let's take instruction on this. And thou shalt teach diligently, diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. When? We don't need to focus so much on teaching them, and I love it, and y'all know me. We don't need to worry near as much about teaching them how to fish and how to hunt as we do about God. We don't need to teach them how to slide into home base. We need to teach them how to slide into an altar. We don't need to 
I mean, yeah, I like sports. Praise God. But if sports gets in the way of church, it's wrong. Yeah. And we need to set our priorities right. We need to light it up so that God's going to be first and foremost in everything we do. Right. And when it is in our lives, it will be in theirs. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes there's going to be some distractions. Sometimes there's going to be hard spots where you think they're just not, it's not getting through. Oh, yeah. That they're just not, they're not comprehending. They're not taking what I'm trying to give. Just hold on, folks. Amen. Just keep Amen. on. Just keep plugging. Just keep pushing. Amen. Amen. Because the Lord is faithful. Yes, the right. Word of God will not fall void. Amen. Amen. And you may think, well, it's falling on deaf ears. No, they can hear. That's right. Mm, hallelujah. Amen. 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 And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand. And thou shalt be as frontlets between thy eyes. These statutes should be something that every time that we look down, every time that we see something, we should think about the Lord. Frontless between your eyes. Every time if you if you've got frontless on, you're going to see that every time you open your eyes. Every time you look out, you're going to see that. Mm -hmm. I want to be that way with the Lord. I want to see His Word. I want to see His, His goodness. I want to see His presence. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see Him. Yeah. And in that, I want to portray that to my child. Amen. Right. Right. Man. I've got to teach him. Yes, if sir. I don't teach her, who do you think will? The world. The world. I've got to have her in the house of God. I've got to have her sitting here listening to God. Sometimes she may not want to. She's going to anyway as long as she's under my house. Right. In my Come on. Amen. The Bible says that if you neglect to do that, then you're wrong. That's right. I'm not going to get into meddling, but I am pastoring this morning a little bit. Come on, bro. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, like it is. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Don't matter if it's child or grandchild. That's right. That's right. But their mom and daddy won't let me. Then you do everything you can to be a light to that child. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. They shouldn't anybody be able to enter your property and not know that the presence of the Lord is welcome and lives there. Amen. Amen. There should be no way that somebody can walk into your house and feel anything but God. Yeah. If that's the kind of, let me just back up, that's the kind of daddy I want. Have you arrived? No, I don't know that I've arrived, but I'm working on it. Amen. Amen. I'm not perfect. I'm Amen. still walking in flesh, Amen. but I'm trying to do the best I can. Does there come discouraging moments of the daddy? Oh, yes, sir. That's right. Yes, mate. Amen. There's times when I say, hey, well, I'm just wasting my time and my effort right here. Yes. But you know what I do? I don't go sit down in the corner and cry and moan and groan and right. say, well, I'm just done. I've just done all I can do. No, I say, though it's slavery, yet will I trust him. Yes, sir. And the joy of God will give me all my energy for when I fall, I shall rise. There's going to be those down times, but I'm not going to stay there. Right. You don't worry about me. I'm going to get my carcass back up. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm not going to stay there. Amen. I'm not going to let the devil win. I'm not going to just say, well, I'll just let the child be whatever it wants to be. No, mm -mm. I'm going to train. I'm going to teach. I'm going to direct. And I'm going to guide. Amen. And I'm not going to do it according to my will and according to my flesh. I'm going to do it according to the will of the Lord. By the power and the might of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to direct God and do what I need to do Amen. with the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. It's the only thing that I can do. It's what I must do. Amen. Proverbs chapter 14. I want to show you something there. 
verse uh, 26, sorry. Proverbs 14, 26. Where the Lord says, In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. Now, if you look at that just a little closer, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. If I fear the Lord, which don't, that doesn't mean to be scared of him. That means to reverence him, to exalt him, to love him, to put him in a place of a, in authority over my life. That's right. Then I build what? The Bible says that it's strong confidence. I build a fort. Amen. That's right. The fear of the Lord built a fort around me. Right. And his children shall have a place of refuge. When I understand the Lord and I understand that reverence and I understand my place with him and how my, my mindset, my heart set toward him, then I build, the Lord builds a fort or a fortress around me and then my children can even come in too and be safe. Why? Because the fear of the Lord. When you have the fear of the Lord in your house, Amen. it affects things. Amen. It affects those that enter your house, the ones that live there, because they can see it in you. All right. Amen. Your child can see it. Your grandchild can see it. They don't know what it is sometimes. But the fear of the Lord, the reverence of the Lord is very, very important for any man. God put us here for a reason. He didn't just put us here yeah. to go to work and to just, you know, be someone that our kids sees every now and then. You can be at home every day and be absent from your children. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Every day. You can be there with them and be absent. I'm reminded of a story. There was a young man standing in the courtroom. The judge was standing there before him, fixed to give him sentence, and he knew this young man. Him and his father were really good friends. His father had passed away. And he looked at this young man, he was fixing to go to the penitentiary. And he said, son, do you not remember who your father was? He said, yes, sir, I know who he was. And he said, uh, the judge said, well, he was a, you know, he was a brilliant law professor. He said, he wrote books. And he was, you know, just a tremendous, tremendous citizen. And here, you know, his son stands before the judge, fixed to be pronounced sentence on him. And the judge asked him again, he said, does that not mean anything to you who your father was? He said, I know who my father was, but do you? All right. He said, I'd walk into my study while my father was writing his books, and I'd say, Dad, can we go play ball, or can we go do this? And he'd say, boy, leave me alone. Mm -hmm. I've got to finish this book. Mm -hmm. right. I don't have time for you right now. Uh -huh. Yep. And the judge said, he finished the book, but he lost the boy. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. We've got to be cautious of the way we're spending our time with our children. Amen. Our children need us. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. You know, most of the folks, when I worked in community corrections, most of the folks that were in that would come out of a fatherless home. That's right. Most of them. Well, they can be raised by their mama, yeah, but you know what? You don't get stuff from mama like you do from daddy. I don't care if you're boy or girl. Right. Child needs their daddy. Right. They need their father's direction. They need their father's guidance. They need their father's love. Right. Don't just need correction. They need instruction. Right. Amen. And I just... I just want to be that. Amen. I'm not perfect. I mess up. Mm -hmm. 
But I'm striving to do what I feel that the Lord wants me to do. Amen. Amen. I read over the book of Psalm 103, verse uh, 13 through verse 18. It says, Like a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. So we're going back to that reverence again. We're going back to that place in our heart where he should be. We shouldn't have God on that equal playing field. We shouldn't have him as our co-pilot. He shouldn't be our, our best bud that we hang with. Me and him's got something special. No. Right. No, we, we have to understand that reverence for the Lord and he is our Father. He's our King of kings, Lord Amen. of lords. He is high and lifted up. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me get back over here. Verse 14 says, For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are grass as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. But the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember, remember his commandments to do them. Remember. Amen. Remember. We are to remember. These commandments were to teach them. Amen. That's right. Amen. When we go out, when we come in, when we go to bed, when we rise up. That's right. What does that mean? We're to live it. Yes, we we as fathers, we have to take care of our families. We have to make a living for them. Amen. Yes, we have to. We have to be the, the authority in the house. We have to be that, that headship. But we cannot forget those that are close to us. Those, not just, not just the, the kids, the wives. Amen. Those the wives, right. the kids, they all depend on you. Not just for what you can go out and make a paycheck and bring home, or not just for what you can go out and hunt and fish and bring home, or not just for what you can uh, get or obtain, or what kind of a house you can put them in, or what kind of car you can put them in. They, they depend on you for moral, Spiritual guidance. That's right. And they depend on you for love. That's right. Amen. If we we can know about him, but if we never spend time with him, when we don't love him, we don't keep his commandments, that relationship's not gonna be very good. Right. It's not going to be healthy. It's not going to produce good fruit. Hallelujah. Mm, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Mm. We're only here for a little while. I'm reminded, and I don't mean to bring up any, any thoughts or feelings, but I'm reminded of what I heard Brother, uh, well, his name is what I made. He was a pastor down at Cornerstone and called him with John Hope. Hope. I remember what Brother John Hope preached one time. <coughs> He said, you get 30 minutes of fame in your life. 
And that's when they have your funeral. The pity is you're not there to hear. Your life is summed up in 30 minutes. But what you do while you're here it makes another generation or right. it'll right. break Amen. another generation. Amen. That's right. Amen. Good. Yes, sir. We have to be responsible. We have to take the initiative. I know we've got men here that are single. We've got men here that are married. We've got men that some of their fathers, some that are not. But just like I told the women on Mother's Day, you're still a mother or a guide to somebody. That's right. That's right. If you're living, That's right. you're breathing. You are here for a reason. God has a purpose for you. That's right. Amen. And it's not to live your own life and to do your own thing. But it's to love Him, show Him, teach Him. Amen. We have to teach Him in our actions. We have to teach Him in our words. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Does the devil chastising us? No, I'm not chastising you. I'm telling you what kind of father I want to be. Amen. I'm talking Amen. to me. I want to be that kind of daddy. Amen. I want to be. She don't like me sometimes. My daughter don't. She loves me every once in a while. <laughs> Especially when I do things for her, Brother Rick, she likes me pretty good then. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but one of these days she'll look back Amen, and she'll say, you know, Daddy told me. That's right, he was a good daddy. He tried to teach me. He tried to show me. Amen. Amen. Right. It'll be up to her is how she lives her life, but it's up to me to teach her how to right. while Amen. she's gone. Right. Amen. And I'm going to do my best at it. Amen. <laughs> what kind of father do you want to be? This is the kind I want to be. Amen. Amen. I want to be one that fears the Lord and teaches that reverence to those around me. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for all of our fathers. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thankful for all those that are here, yeah. all those that are past, and all those that are going to be future folks. That's right. Yeah. I hope that I'm talking to some of them right now. I hope that they're hearing what God has for them. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Lord, I know I'm not perfect, but I humble myself before you right now, and I ask you, Lord, to tear out anything out of me that would hinder me from teaching my child or teaching anyone else, Lord, to love, honor, and respect you with everything in them. Lord, I want to teach your word when I go out, when I come in, when I lay down, when I rise up. I want to be teaching it, Lord, when we have our family meal. Showing them how to pray. Tendering myself before my family, Lord. Yes, yes. I pray, Lord, that you will not let me think myself too much of a man that I cannot kneel to pray. Or that I cannot humble myself and weep tears before you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let me be an example. Let me be what needs to be seen, Lord. Let me be like you. Lord, I thank you for all these fathers today. 
I thank you, Lord, for their example, for their guidance, and their help. Lord, bless each and every one, I pray. In Jesus' name. Jesus, Jesus. Everybody said. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Sister Melody, if you've got... I did y'all follow today, gift. That ain't going very long. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Well, I had a couple of poems I found that was really cute. One is from a kid's perspective. This is a poem about my daddy. I've turned you gray. I've made you proud. I've spent your pay. I've stressed you out. I've hurt you bad. I've made you laugh. I've sent you mad. And I've made you smile. I've made you sob. And that, I thought that was cute. That's, there's so many things, you know, kids do, I mean, and we do it to our parents, you know, we've done it, we've been there, done it, uh, didn't buy a t-shirt, but, you know, uh, I'm thankful for uh, my father that raised me, and I'm thankful for other men that have stepped in where my father might not have been able to uh, persuade me in certain areas, you know, been a help and a guidance, whether it was financial questions or situations, you know, and I'm just thankful for all that, and I'm thankful for my husband becoming the father that he is, you know. Uh, our fathers raise us for those purposes. They try to show us what kind of a man that you should pick. It, it may not be the exact same one, but, you know, you, you take certain things from them. You, okay, you like these attributes, but you would like this a little bit softer in this area, you know. My dad was, uh, he was a very good father, but he was very quick to be upset. <laughs> And so I was like, okay, I want something a little less in that area. You know how you tweak things. Just like when a woman's looking for a man, a man's looking for a woman. You, you look for the certain things that you, you want, okay? And I'm thankful for the examples that they have been in my life. And uh, I appreciate every one of them. And I have one more poem that I'm going to read. Okay, it says, Fathers are wonderful people, too little understood, and we do not sing their praises as often as we should. But fathers are just wonderful in a million different ways. And they merit loving compliments and accolade of praise. For the only reason dad aspires to fortune and success is to make the family proud of him and to bring them happiness. And like our heavenly father, he's a guardian and a guide. Someone that we count on to be always on our side. Happy Father's Day, guys. Amen. We have we appreciate everything you do, and uh, whether it's always acknowledged or it's kind of you just do it, and that's just what you do. You know, that's sometimes what parents do, and we're, we appreciate everything that you do. And if anybody that is a father, I'd like for y'all to stand. Brother Freeman, we have three trays up here, so I want you guys to get a few things from each tray, okay? Come on up, gentlemen. Come on. Don't be shy. Come on. Some of them have the same things, so get the few things you would like to have. We have different multiplicities in case you need tools or you need a light or go ahead, go ahead. get you a candy too. Get out there. <laughs> candy or a, or a, a salty. We have the worst. <laughs> Little 
bit of work and a little bit of sweets. I figure most of them would like beef jerky, so you know.
Keep each and every one, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. I love you. I love you.